So uh, I know I'm starting a little bit earlier than I had expected. And part of the reason is, is today getting in one of these rooms is kind of uh, a little difficult. So um, uh, there was a very, uh, very short t periods of time where I could get in here. And I was able to get in about 45 minutes early, which was kind of nice um, because I only have this place until 3.30. And I know sometimes that our... Uh, our live streams can go quite some, uh, quite go, go long. Uh, we've had a couple of two hour uh, live streams and I look forward to those long live streams because that means that you guys are here, you're interacting with me and, and all those different things. I know it's gonna take a few minutes for people to show up and to get, uh, get, get in this, uh, uh, into chat and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk about some cool things that I have been doing and uh, about a decision that um, I'm coming to a conclusion with. And uh, then I will get into the topic, uh, mostly because I wanna be able to wait for you guys to show up. Um, so uh, I was able to, uh, because GoDaddy was offering a deal, I now have a domain name. It is called uh, Hobo Tuck, H-O-B-O Tuck. Uh, hey, Steven, nice to see you. Uh, hobotuck.com. Um, so that's T U C K. And so you can go over there and, uh, I'm going to be doing a subscription and moving everything over from my blog, uh, which is, um, Wix. Okay. And part of the reason why I didn't go with Wix, cause I was looking at going with Wix is that they have increased their price so much that it's gone from like uh, $12 a month to like $24 a month. Hey, Cherokee. Nice to see you. Uh, Hey, Hey Joe. Nice to see you. And so um, it, it just, it, it, and then I also looked at it to see, you know, cause I thought, well, maybe I'll be, uh, you know, searchable, uh, if I pay for the premium and, and so on and so forth, uh, or at least maybe I'm searchable now so that people can find, uh, my articles and it can kind of improve views and also give me a digital footprint, um, across the world wide web. Well, it turns out that Wix has not been doing any of that for me, which I mean, what do you expect? It's free. And so that's when I went, I, I was going to do Wix. And then I looked at GoDaddy and it was like nine fifty for a whole year. Um, that includes a domain, the website builder, uh, and an SSL certificate. So I got all of that for $9 and 89 cents after tax. Uh, so that is, that is something that I'm working on building out. It'll be you can go over to hobotuck.com and check it out, uh, you know, get subscribed, put it in your favorites, whatever you do. But I've got to transfer a lot of stuff over there. Um, and also the donation link is going to change as well because uh, I get a payment processor uh, as part of the, the website. So I have a way for people to make donations and it can be done through secure transaction one. And you're not dealing with platforms like uh, uh, like Cash App or or PayPal, you're going through like emergent services. So like when I owned my my cleaning business, uh, I took credit cards and I had to have a merchant service account, which was you know you have a third party entity that negotiates rates for you, and depending upon the card that gets used, is the rate. And you know, a Visa has multiple different rates because you know Visa is you know there there are different Visa cards and so on and so forth. And so you know depending upon you know the popularity of the card and stuff like that like American Express it comes with like the highest fees uh, it's like 5% to take an American Express card uh, but that's still less expensive than what I'm paying through um, through uh, 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 PayPal and uh, uh, cash app cash app so like I got I got twenty six dollars and eighty cents but when I cashed out I only got twenty four dollars uh, I would get if somebody put twenty six dollars and eighty cents in this uh, in this payment processor, I would probably walk away with about twenty twenty six dollars twenty five dollars and fifty cents at most. Okay, so um, one, it's going to be something that allows you to keep your anonymity. You don't have to worry about your stuff being stored. Um, it's a, uh, and I also have to go through special training to be able to do it because I have to be certified. Uh, so that's something uh, that I also have to work on. But that is kind of what's going on with the blog site. So uh, I am working on that. And then the 
Um, the, the other part of it is, um, you know, so I'm making a decision. Do I stay in Cincinnati? Do I go to West Virginia? And the thing is, I think I need to do both and I need to figure out how to split my time because right now I'm doing the urban, the, the urban survival guide for homelessness. And, uh, you know, I'm creating a whole playlist for it and I'm going to create another playlist that is just those videos. Um, so that people that are newly homeless, they, they have something to watch and kind of, uh, get, get certain things done. Okay, and so uh, it, it's it, uh, it's sorry guys. I'm they don't really. If you look here, see that that that's open space there, and so there's children on both sides playing. So you're gonna be hearing children in the background. I do apologize about that, but anyways, um, uh, so I I need to figure out a way to split my time between the two because I need to learn the things out there and in and here and kind of do a two prong thing. And I think that this is gonna end up taking a lot of my time. Time. So I, I've got to, you know, I'm probably going to have to sit back and talk with the guy and see what what works for him and and so on and so forth because, um, you know, there's going to be times where I where I need to be there, you know, to help out around the property, especially with like farming, cultivating, and preparing for the end of the world, as well as you know being able to have time to get back here and to you know. Uh, kind of go through the government services. So one of the things that I'm going to be working on is uh, is doing government um, uh, doing a government program. Okay, so like there's different programs. So uh, you guys heard me talk about applying for homeless benefits. So I'm going to go through the process of that. You know, from you know arriving in town to getting to a point where you um, getting to a point where you are able to uh, you know get housed up and kind of what that process is like uh, that way somebody that want that is curious about it and stuff like that why the hell would you bring kids to a library to scream see that's what i don't understand okay so but anyways let me answer some of these questions um while i while i calm down about like all this crazy stuff i hope it's not too bad on your guys's end but um you know i don't understand why you bring screaming kids to a library um, it makes no sense. This is a place for work, not a place for play. You know, take your kids to a park. Um, okay, so how do you work, walk every day that far? Uh, don't you get sore? Um, yeah, my legs, my legs are sore, but I mean, I walk probably about 10 to 10 to 15 miles a day easy. Uh, and you know, your body gets conditioned to it. You don't really think about it. Yeah. You're a little bit sore on the colder mornings. You're a little bit sore on the, uh, when you, you know, like sleeping on the ground versus sleeping in a hammock. So when I sleep in my hammock, it, like my body gets a, a better chance to recover. So, uh, I'm going to walk, uh, and we'll be hitting that ball. Yeah, you know what? That's that's my favorite thing to do. When I was in San Francisco is I like to go to Hippie Hill, smoke a bowl, and then walk through the park and end up at the beach. So I rediscovered the joys of gas station food. Gas station food is pretty good. It, there are some places like Circle K used to do one for like four or five dollars. You'd get a Coke and two hot dogs. And I mean, that's that's a hell of a deal. Uh, some of these gas stations, if you pay attention to the deals, if you if you sign up for their apps, you can get some smoking deals and be able to live cheaply and still eat pretty good. So that that's something to, to consider. Okay, so I'm switching back to Sativa. Indica makes me glued to the ground. Um, I, I don't know. I, I like, I like Indica myself, but you know, uh, I, I need it. I need something to slow me down because my, my body and my brain just go so fast. That's part of the reason why I walk 10 miles a day. It's just so that I can burn off that excess energy, uh, and the anxiety that I deal with every day. So, um, I use a card instead of cash out. Um, I use the card instead of uh, cash out. Um, oh, if you're talking about cash app, yeah. I mean, you can use the, the the cash app card and stuff like that, but I have a bank account because I have to have direct deposit. So I have everything funnel into my bank account from all the various payment systems that, that I am attached to, whether it be Amazon, YouTube, uh, PayPal, cash app, and now I'm working on my website. So, but the PayPal and cash app, uh, those are going to end up going away and I'm going to put a, a link there in the description moving forward. It'll probably be in about a week or two. Um, I, I'm probably going to run a dummy transaction and pay myself like a dollar just to see how it works. Unless one of you guys, because I did put it in the community tab. 
So if you go over to the community tab and you want to put like a dollar or two dollars or something like that in there just to see if it works, how it works uh, and, and things like that, um, you know, and then just kind of leave me a comment in that community tab so that I know how it works from your end. Because the thing is, is being the admin, uh, I, I still get some admin view even when I go out and try and and view it from the outside because you know I, I it still remembers that I have those permissions so I don't get to see everything like you guys do because of you know being the designer and the creator so um, where am I from I am originally from Oregon so do you have any ballpark ideas for health for middle-aged man with no ailments or tobacco alcohol usage well, you know what, if you, uh, if you have the ability to get the subsidized health insurance, I'd recommend that if, you, uh, if you're, you're not a Medi Medi and can get Advantage plan. Um, but if you're looking to be inexpensive, you, you, as long as you make under $20,000 a year or like over, I think it's like $15,000 a year, they will uh, subsidize you. So that, that's another thing that, um, that I'm surprised that they're subsidizing homeless individuals because not a, we don't make that much money. Um, even, even somebody on Social Security maybe makes eleven dollars or $12,000 a year. Okay, so they don't really make a lot. Uh, so you know, but again, that's just another thing. Uh, but if you're if you're not gonna Cherokee, just look at subsidized healthcare uh, when you come here to the states. Right on with the ten to fifteen miles a day. Same here, man. Y yeah, your body just gets acclimated to it. Um, farming is where it's at. Um, yes, if you if you can. But I, I've known some growers, and they actually make you destroy a portion of your crops and bury it uh sometimes they'll even make you burn it uh depending upon where you're at so can't wait to visit bucky's for the first time so, bucky's eh, it's not that great um ever consider getting a mon motorized bicycle or an e-bike not with a dog especially not with this dog um the second there's a jolt she's jumping so um you know uh, uh yeah i i just i don't know um uh, bikes are not in it for me i prefer like if i'm gonna do anything i would get myself like one of those um one of those john deere golf carts now that now my old man got one too and i'm like yeah that's cool you save on gas now if i was gonna do something that's what i would have and i'd probably have a trailer and i'd probably go all around town in that and that's what i would set my camp up with i mean if i really wanted to be a rich hobo that's what i would do you know, so um, I ever considered, uh, okay, be sure to get the brisket sandwich. Okay, uh, first tour homeless, I was walking between Boise and Caldwell daily. It's close to 20 miles being on speed. Uh, yes, um, yeah, you can go for 20, 24 hours at a time. That's why they used it for the Blitzkrieg, man. Um, there, there was a purpose for it. Okay, so let me, let me talk a little bit about acclimate weather now that we're getting into this. I mean, it's, we're already 12 minutes in, which is good. That means you guys are, are interacting. Um, okay, so dealing with inclement weather when you're out here. So uh, I, I even had a conversation last night about this. Okay, so when you're down in, let's say, Florida or you're in Louisiana, right? Um, when when it gets cold out or when it when when the clouds come in uh it it can if it's cold it's going to retain the cold but then you have the rain come in and but down south it'll actually warm up before it rains so it'll be like 40 uh you know let's say 45 and then it'll heat up to about 50 and then it'll start raining uh just because of the humidity well up here in cincinnati because we're west of the uh, of the Appalachians, uh, we don't we don't have the the high humidity like what you have on the east coast and east of the Appalachians and down south. Okay, and so when you're when you're dealing with the cold here, I mean it's almost like it was almost like being back home in Oregon all over again. Okay, and in Oregon you've got clouds, you've got wind, you've got rain, and it just it it's a cold. Even though it's forty five degrees, it feels like it's twenty five degrees between the wind, the rain, and the cold. And then keeping your gear dry is a serious pain in the butt. And quite frankly, I had a huge struggle with me and Sam. My gear got soaked a couple times, and I had to the next morning, um, you know, uh, you know, go and find a place to dry it out, and that that can be that can be a little difficult at times especially considering it, you know it's usually about three days of a cold front and then it warms up it just you know it takes three days for it to pass through 
usually the second day is the worst and then it just starts getting better after that uh so uh, now that like as of last night we had no cloud covers but for being 31 degrees it was warmer in the morning than with 37 degrees waking up with rain and wind uh you know and we were sleeping up on top of a hill you know uh which you know you would expect to be a little bit cooler but it wasn't and so this is just something that that when you're dealing with with inclement weather like this you really need to consider uh, your your cover and uh, how you're because the thing is is you don't realize what leaks and what doesn't leak you know a lot of your experience being homeless like if you're newly homeless you're gonna get soaked a lot you're gonna get caught you know you're gonna miss meals a lot you're gonna miss a lot of stuff because you know you're getting yourself acclimated you're getting yourself started and then you know you're just you're not good at time management or whatever it may be and so therefore you get stuck in in weird positions and the most important thing is being able to figure out a way out of it. Um, I, I think that you know one of the things of being homeless is is it, it, you you're required to MacGyver things. Okay, so uh, you have what you have on hand. Figure that out and figure out how to turn it into something that you can use to be able to sleep, eat, or you know manage your day. And so like say, uh, I don't have a sleeping pad because I'm set up for a hammock. Well, there isn't a lot of places. Well, now that it's about to warm up this next week. Sam and I are going to go explore part of Cincinnati and see if we can find ourselves some wooded areas where I can pitch my hammock. Um, otherwise, what I'm going to have to do on payday is get myself um, get myself a uh, a sleeping pad of some sorts, uh, so that you know because the that ground I, I need something not necessarily soft but something cushy enough to where you know I'm when because I, I being in a hammock you learn to uh, you learn to to sleep in one position and not toss and turn and stuff like that. Well, now that I'm sleeping on the ground, if I lay on my right side, I stay on my right side and I wake up with the really sore bones because I, I was putting pressure on that same spot all night long because I had no cushion. So that's kind of the reason why you'd need some sort of cushion. But you know, my uh, when you are looking at you know dealing with rain, especially with cold, you should also really pay attention to the direction of the wind, but also expect the wind to change directions as well because we got snow or excuse me we we got hail mixed with rain um what would it say uh was it thursday uh and then friday morning we got we were supposed to get snow so you know and then you've got it like it, it was like raining and drizzling and and just kind of like misting for for you know the last like three days and it's just been a serious pain in the butt and you know, managing to keep dry, that's kind of the reason why we come in here. And you know, if it was a wet day or a wet night last night, I would be, you know, using one of these rooms, these study rooms, and I would be, you know, putting my gear out and I would be drying it off, which would be my tarp, my, uh, uh, my under quilt and my sleeping bag. And you know, I also have Sam that is on her blanket as well. And I, if we're gonna, if we're gonna stay this far north, I'm gonna have to get her a doggy sleeping bag. So if any of you guys got suggestions, because I want something that will be able to survive down to about at least 20 degrees to where she'll be warm, uh, because that's about as cold as it gets before we figure out a way inside. So, um, you know, that being that. So now let me go through and answer some of your questions and we'll start, um, we'll start more. Okay, um, be sure to, okay. Uh, Okay, so I worked full time and home free out of my car in Oregon around uh, CJ. Oh, um, something Junction. Um, oh God, I, sh I know that area. It's. Uh, I think. I think your Grants Pass. Is, so that means you're down by Lapine. Okay. Um, so uh, and that was more dangerous than living out of my truck in Alaska. Really? Why was it? Why was it more dangerous living? there okay do you like arizona i want to tour there before i decide texas or florida as arizona seems good too plus 420 is legal um if you're not going to want to go to texas okay and you're not going to want to go to florida unless you get a medical card texas doesn't even have medical marijuana um they are old school about it if you were uh, texas is you're not going to like it cherokee i'm just telling you you, you know it, it's a it's a great uh, idea but there are certain life 
lifestyle choices that you make that um, will make life a little bit more difficult. Now, can you find wheat there? Yes, you can. Um, uh, maybe maybe um, one day, well, no, I don't have his number anymore, but I'd say I could share with you my contact in the area uh, if you, you know, went down to Dallas. Uh, you can find it, but it is... It, it is something done on such a down low that it will take you three months to find it. So you better come with a three month supply. And you know, another thing is, is whenever I would go get it, especially in Texas, I went on the toll roads because the police can't go on the toll roads, uh, at least in Texas. In Florida, it's different. But in Texas, you know, and then that way I would just go from place to place. And that was included in my cost because it was a lot safer for me than driving a packed road. And you know, these cops, if you're not speeding, they're going to pull you over because they think you got something. And I'm the type of guy that likes to drive the speed limit because I don't want to deal with any legal problems. But in Texas, if you're not speeding, they will give you, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pull you over because they think that you're doing something. Okay. So, um, because they expect everybody to break the law there, uh, you know, as far as Texas goes, but Texas does not have any medical, medical marijuana at all. Florida does, uh, you're going to pay about 300 bucks a year and they're going to have a lot more control on it. If you're going to want to go somewhere somewhere and have that lifestyle, you're going to want to go to a weed legal state. You know, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, California, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, uh, Ohio, you know, and things like that. And if you if you're looking at like getting into warmer climate, Arizona is going to be much better for you, especially since uh, Cherokee, are you on the West Coast or East Coast? Okay, because if you're on the East Coast, you're probably used to humidity. But if you're on the West Coast, you're not. And Arizona has dry heat. So when it's 100 degrees and you come from a place like Texas or Florida, it feels like 75 or 80 because you're so used to the humidity and it just being so crazy hot that you um, that, that you you're it seems colder than what it is. And you'll put on a sweater because there's no humidity in the air. So they have a dry heat and Arizona is really, really good for that. But it's also a desert. And so if they lose water supply, um, especially what was happening at that lake uh, that was that was getting too low, you're you're going to be in a sh in a world of trouble. We'll just put it that way. OK, so moisture and humidity are the devil. Yes, they are. Um, read the book Born to Run by Christopher McDougall, the hidden tribe that eats peyote and go <laughs> for ultra marathons. Hey, what's up, foodie? Um, okay, Hennessy hammocks are awesome. Um, you know, Cave, oh, Cave, uh, you, Cave Jackson or Cave Junction? Yeah, Cave Junction, okay. So, um, snow, okay, uh, it was more dangerous because of all the people, forest fires at the same time, 2018. Lots of underground deals are, uh, that ended up with, oh yes. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're down in, in, in the uh, rural, rural part of Oregon. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of gonna, you know, it's, it's gonna be that way. Like the drug highway goes through Lane County. Um, and, uh, the reason why I ended up going to jail, part of it was, is because the, the two officers that showed up, the, the, um, my girlfriend's uh, best friend's husband was a cook for the Aryan Nation. And so the, he already told me that, that, yeah, the cops were turned over and everything else like that there. And there was only two cops in the whole town. It was that small. And so you have mules and things like that that go through there. And so uh, with the open forest and areas like that, yeah, that can be a lot more dangerous. So, um, but yeah, you, you, you really got to work. Out. Um, uh, yeah, weed in Idaho is the same charge as hard drugs. Yeah, that's stupid. I mean, you know, we, we, people are going to end up doing, you know, hard drugs or they're going to end up doing drugs. But, you know, here's the here's the other the flip side of all this as well. In the states that are legalizing it and decriminalizing it, because it, it becomes easier to get and you have people now being able to go into dispensaries and purchase it, now uh, the only thing that the dealers can sell is the white dope. Well, so what that means is that the white dope epidemic is going to expand. So this is the double-edged sword of legalizing it is, you know, you're going to have things like fentanyl and and uh, molly and meth uh, really kind of you know, get a greater expansion because, you know, uh, just the way it is. Now here in Cincinnati, it seems a little bit different. 
okay? But um, everywhere else I've been, it usually, like if they legalize it, that's usually what happens is the white dope takes over uh, you, because you now you don't, you, you once it becomes legal, your, your options for housing go up. Okay, especially if you're a stoner in the stoner community, because that means that you can go rent a house and if you smoke, if you smoke weed, they can't tell you, no, you can't because it's legal. You, they just got to tell you, you can smoke outside. And, you know, if your neighbor smells it, they can't do anything for it. Well, so now all of a sudden you don't have to hide it. Um, you don't, you're not paying as much for it because it's now abundant. You know, for example, I'm getting an eighth for 25 you're you're getting you're you're having that happen okay um you know where it becomes cheaper to where you can actually uh you know function and and go back to living a normal lifestyle without being dead broke because i remember my first quarter cost me 140 dollars now you can get them for 60 bucks you know uh 50 bucks if if you know the right people you know, and whenever somebody would say 50 bucks, I would be like, no, that's swag. But now that they've legalized it here in, in Ohio, it's just like the bottom fell out of it. It's a race to the bottom, you know, to see who can offer the best prices. But as soon as, as soon as those dispensaries come in, people are going to make a choice. And that choice is going to be, uh, do I go, do I go to the guy that I know that I've been getting it from for a while, who is now going to give me bottom shelf price for mid grade quality? Or am I going to go to the store and deal with it? Because, I mean, I've been doing it on the download to begin with. Now, a lot of the newcomers will go uh, and, the, and the next generation will start going there. And you'll see the, the pot dealers kind of be phased out over time. Uh, if, you know, because, I mean, in Portland, I, I think, what, within a couple of years, nobody sells it. You just go down to a store. They're on, they're, they're, there's, there's one within your neighborhood within a five minute drive. So, you know, that's not, it's something you don't have to worry about. Okay. So, um, weed's legal here in Alaska. Yes. It's one of the, um, forbidden fruit aspect goes away. Um, yes. Uh, it, well, not only that, it's, it's, uh, the, the criminal consequences go away as well. And so, the, the higher the consequences, the more you can charge, okay? Because you, you're, you're taking a risk to give somebody something they want so that you can catch a charge that may strip you of all of your wealth and put you in a holding cell for one to five years, uh, sometimes longer depending upon the, what it is that you get caught with, okay? And, and so, yeah, it does take that away. But um, as far, I have some questions for you guys. So as far as the, the, um, uh, urban, uh, uh, the urban survival guide for the homeless, what do you guys think of that? Do you guys think that it is good? Do you find the information valuable? Uh, I made a list of like 11 and some of them are going to have to be combined. Like I have one tomorrow that's going to be combined. Okay. So um, it's, I'm just curious how you guys are receiving it. Um, I am working on making, because here's, here's my overall goal, okay? Um, to, and this is why I'm doing this series and I'm going to do another series is because you want to, so uh, just like when you, like with my cleaning business, right? Um, every month I knew I had like eight recurring clients that I would see probably anywhere between 15 to 20 times a month. So I had 20, 20 appointments already booked every month and it was something I never had to worry about, okay? And so what I would do is I would go and I would fill the, the open vacant times until I got to like 30 and 40 and so on and so forth until my whole month was, was billed out and uh, I was working two months in advance and trying to hire another cleaning crew and, and, and train them, okay? Well, the same thing goes with YouTube. By having certain certain videos that are searchable that people are going to be looking for on a constant basis that will allow them to uh, to, to get you know some information on, on how to be able to um, on how to be able to navigate this situation if they get in this situation or for those that are looking for a good story um, you know somebody to follow to kind of have a vested interest in you know they'll be able to, to follow this channel but it will be searchable so. I need a minimum of 30,000 views per month, okay? So for me to get 30,000 views, I need to have a, a minimum of a base of like, let's say 
um, you know, 15 to 20,000, which means that I, people are, I am getting 20,000 views regardless, uh, every month, whether I post a video or not, because, um, you know, it just, it, it, it makes it so that I don't have to make as much content and I can take time to make more quality content. So, um, you know, just to see what, what you guys think of this. So what do you guys think of the Urban Homeless Survival Guide? Also, what do you guys think of me doing a, a POV of what it's like to, to go and apply for benefits and go from being sleeping on a street corner to uh, with nothing to being able to put a, a roof over your head and getting housed. Do you think that that would be something that you'd be interested in following along in that journey? And if so, what, what, how do you think I should title that journey? Because it'll be something like, kind of like how I do over on Patreon, you know, hobo journeys um, or, or hobo tutorials. So, you know, every time you see that, it's a tutorial and it's it's from Patreon. So um, don't stop interviews. I'm not stopping the interviews. I will keep doing interviews. And part of part of doing that that um, uh, that process of uh, of going and applying for for benefits to get myself housed is um, I will have to interview a lot of these people and kind of get their perspective and get their input and stuff like that because I really. I think it, I, I think I have just because I'm experiencing it and um, I'm giving you updated information because anything that happened uh, within the last five years uh, is, you know, completely trumps anything that happened in the previous 10, 20, 30 years because so much has changed since like 2019, 2020 that um, that homelessness is not what it used to be. If you, you know, homeless in 2018 is different than homeless in 2020 just because of, you know, the, the pandemic and how it really mucked everything up and how people got stuck in the shelter in place, uh, stuck in between home and, and uh, where they started from and were stuck homeless and stranded for uh, up to a few months because of the lockdowns, okay? And so that created a whole new generation of homelessness and then you know because of all of that then you know and the massive explosion of homelessness because of the shelter in place then all of a sudden you have homeless tent cities and tent camps popping up everywhere because the police can't really do anything because they don't have enough shelters and because they don't have enough shelters they can't just give you a ticket and throw you in jail at least not right now we will find out in june whether or not the uh the martin v boise or excuse me boise v martin is overturned if boise v martin is overturned you know things like what kentucky's doing which is they'll put you in jail for 90 days just for um just for sleeping on a street corner Okay, they can put you in jail for 90 days. In places like uh, Tennessee, you are now committing a felony because they're no longer restricted by the requirement that they have to have enough shelter. So if they don't have enough shelters, then they can just criminalize homelessness and it becomes a slippery slope. And next thing you know, that they have just the same way they have with the migrants. And speaking of the migrants, you need to make your way over to Redacted after this live stream. And you need to look at their um, their video about what's going on at the southern border as far as um, you know a, a civil war and stuff like that because uh, I was watching that before I started this live stream and it's just jaw dropping. They are actually taking 50% of these uh, military age men and they are putting them in a MEPS station. So if you're if you've ever been in the military, you know what MEPS is. And so they're they're processing 50% of these of these uh, military age uh, migrants. Uh, into the military. And uh, apparently in places like California, they are even trying to process them into the local law enforcement and government offices because they just don't have enough people um, that are willing to work that cheap, okay? So, and all of this is happening to suppress wages. So, I mean, it's almost like, it's almost like the whole system, it didn't just turn on on one. So in a way, they, they, they went after, they went after the white male and uh, the white male tried to say something and then they went after then they went after uh white people in general and you know people started getting upset but nobody really did anything and then you know they went after these specific groups so if you're not gay you're not transgender now you're the enemy now they've gotten it to the point where now the whole american public is the enemy and 
uh, they, our corporations are choosing foreigners over, you know, supporting their countrymen. They have no loyalty uh, to this country. And there is just, there's going to be enough people that are just going to get fed up with it. And they're going to have, they're just going to say, I'm through. I mean, uh, Tyson was hiring 52,000 migrants, but yet they won't hire Americans. Okay, they won't give a livable wage so that Americans can actually survive because, you know, with inflation, you know, 20 bucks an hour doesn't really get you a one-bedroom apartment anymore. And you should be able to afford a one-bedroom apartment, a car note, uh, insurance, your basic bills, and maybe to go out once a week on like a Friday night and have a couple of beers. It's not asking for a lot, but, you know, if you're going to give up your time, it is at least that valuable. And if it's not that valuable, then you should probably just not work at all, okay, because you, apparently you're disabled, okay? And that's just my opinion, but this is, this is something that is just – you just can't believe that it's true, that it's actually happening because you're like, am I, am I dreaming? Do I need to pinch myself? Is this real? You know, so um, – Oh, pinball probably supports that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, very true. All the clinics are overrun right now. Uh, one good thing about Idaho is that if you own firearms, you have the right to carry them homeless. Um, if you if you have the right to carry a firearm, whether you're housed or homeless, no matter what, um, as long as as long as you fit the background check. So. Uh, okay, kind of like the replacement of the Native Americans off their lands and into the reservation. Yeah. Hey, what's up, outdoors? So, I mean, I think that this is this is this is a fast track. So now, you know, we talk. Uh, I've talked many times about the Great Dispossession. Okay, you, as an American, you're going to lose everything, and you thought, oh no, that can't happen. I'm a hard worker. I'll keep my job. Well, what happens when they're firing you to hire a foreigner? Okay, what happens when they're relocating to help out with the migrant crisis? You know, what happens when your government is funding all of this and it is doing nothing but harm to the very people that are electing them to their office? And, you know, what rights of recourse do we have? We could protest, but what's that going to do? Bring out the military, bring out the police, bring out the tanks, and we get, was it um, Tiananmen Square in America? Or do we vote the bums out and put in a fresh Congress that has never had any bit of political experience because those that have no political experience are going to be a lot better than those that have political experience because those are the ones that are screwing us over to begin with okay so um yeah they took our jobs all right everybody back to the pile um <laughs> if you've seen that episode you you know what i'm talking about um <laughs> sorry that is funny uh, i love south park but, you know, and now you're wondering, it's like, well, I could lose my house, I could lose my job, I could lose my life savings, I could lose everything, and I could be just as homeless as the next guy. Not because there's no jobs, but because they're choosing to hire um, foreigners over, over their own people. Um, you know, they, they have turned, um, they've, tur they've become turncoats. Uh, in, in a lot of ways is what you could call it in, in a nice way, okay? And, and so uh, how likely are you to be dispossessed if your job and uh, how likely is your job going to be affected like this? Because if they're taking over military, that means that they're going to be trained in technology. They're going to be trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. They're going to be trained in supplies and communications. They will be a fully well-trained army within themselves, you know, and is all of this so that we can, you know, have our day of glory, you know, as we burn Russia to the ground? I mean, is this really why they're doing this? And this is really part of the plan to begin with. But the negative consequences of being able to, you know, bring, a, a, you know, and conscript such a large group of people willfully. Because here's the thing. Instead of conscripting you and me, these migrants are coming over and taking your place so that you're not conscripted. Okay, think of it that way too. I mean, you know, so somebody could spin and say that the government's doing you a favor by doing this and you should just shut up and say, say how grateful you are. Um, you know, there, there is a way to spin it that way. And that's the thing about politicians. They can take something negative or positive and spin it the opposite way uh, and, and just do it that way. So simple answer is the average American needs to be trained and armed as well or better. <coughs> well, but that's coming from a place of fear. 
when 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 the constitution and and everything was was created we still had to deal with uh, our, our place within nature and the predators such as bears and lions and tigers and um and mountain lions and wolves and coyotes and spiders and you know all those different things but now we've gotten to a point where not necessarily that we've tamed nature but we have created our own little safety bubble to where you know things like something like uh, uh, you know being afraid of of being invaded is something that we shouldn't have to deal with in modern society because we should be civilized enough to realize that we can we can do this um, we can do this with words instead of doing it with um, with uh, guns and ammo. Okay, but our politicians because they're still you know stuck back in the 1960s uh, and their days of nostalgia, remembering what it was like to be 20 years old again. And, you know, they think that they're Billy Badass. And instead of, you know, realizing that they uh, uh, have tarnished the image of the United States na internationally, uh, they're walking around acting like we're 1960s United States strong and can beat the crap out of anybody. We won two world wars, you know, with that arrogance and that, that, that self-confidence. But we're not there. And so this is what happens when old men are allowed to lead as they try and remember and live the heydays of their youth all over again. And if you allow them in power, they're going to they're going to walk, think that they're walking with a big stick when they really don't have a big stick to begin with. OK. And, uh, you know, this just that's again, that's my thoughts on it. So um, I don't think that the draft is coming, Snow Snake. Uh, I really don't. Uh, I think that the that the amount of conscription and the ability for them to get jobs, join the military, get job skills, and even go back to their home country. Now, if they go back to their home country with these skills, then uh, then we actually probably it will probably be a positive thing with some negative uh, unintended consequences. But uh, because we we want our neighbors to to have the same wealth and prosperity as we do. Because if they are just as wealthy and prosperous and they have the same opportunities that you and I do, what need do they have to come to our country other than just a visit to see sites and to see attractions? They, they have no need. And that is, that is the reason why everybody wants to come to America is because we've made sure that everywhere else is a shithole except for the United States. And instead of doing our, our uh, diligence in the international community by rising all boats with the, with the tide, um, we have chose to sink everybody's boat while letting ours rise with the tide. Okay, so, um, but that's just the way I see history and the way I see things going, you know, that's kind of what I see here. So um, this draft is still vile and uh, supposed to be uh, by most people, my parents' generation is still around, so I don't see the draft happening. Um, the draft could happen if the military gets overrun, but they're gonna they're gonna do the IRR, the Initial Ready Reserve. So when you when you first sign up, even if you do two years, four years, you do National Guard. The first eight years of your contract, you are on the in. Uh, 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 internal ready, ready reserve, okay, which means that if, and this is why they're trying to call back a lot of these retired soldiers is because uh, I think you're still on, once you retire, you're on the IRR for the rest of your life, okay, because you are a skilled soldier. And so they're trying to bring soldiers out of retirement instead of forcing them back through the IRR. But somebody like my old man, who's starting to, to experience early onset, um, you know, senility dementia whatever um he he would not you know if they called him and forced him up he he couldn't do it i mean even though it's second nature um he would he would probably struggle just because of the reduced brain function that's happening with what he's going through okay and you've got a lot of these soldiers that you know because the you got a lot of them that are boomers that have retired that uh, you know, they, they didn't live as long as we live now. And so, you know, their, their brain breaks down at a quicker rate than yours and mine does. Okay. And so therefore they're not going to be as, as viable at 70 years old as, you know, maybe you and I will be, uh, because, you know, we, of the way that we take care of our body and how our aging process has been slowed down through modern medicine. Okay. So, um, Okay, but even among generation mass non-compliance will put a kibosh on it. Um, eh, 
you will have uh, what we saw in Ukraine is what we're going to see everywhere else. Uh, those that are running, like in Vietnam, there was enough people that they could get that they that they just didn't really worry about it too much. But if you have a large enough exodus, you're going to have you're, you're going to have the marshals. You're going to have uh, all, all federal law enforcement agencies seeking those people and bringing them back, kicking and screaming, uh, if they get to a point where they're desperate enough. In Vietnam, we were not desperate enough. If we were getting overran, we would be desperate enough. Okay, for something like that to happen. You know, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so um, uh, it seems like uh, as far as the uh, as the uh, urban survival guide and the uh, other thing that, that does that that does not seem it, it it's not really that interesting to people. It's more of a search term type thing. So, um, what topics uh, are you guys looking for that that will really like? That, that you're not seeing answers to, but you should, but you're, you expect that, you know, by now somebody should have made some content about it. What do, what do you guys think about that? Uh, Mac, um, uh, McNamara's morons. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I, I don't know anything about that, but anyways, um, let's see, what have I got going on for, for the week? Uh, I am, Okay, so there, there's, I've got a couple more videos coming out. Tomorrow is going to be um, how to find gear and how to stash gear and kind of, you know, some tips, some tricks, some ideas on how to, you know, find uh, find good gear and stash good gear because it's gonna, it's a process, especially if you're gonna be in the urban setting. Um, you, you know, this is something that you need to, you know, be well aware of. And if you know that something like this is coming your way, you should definitely uh, be looking at like kind of hedging your situation, you know, getting ahead of it. So uh, you're POV of doing the application is a good idea. Okay, um, what do you what do you think I should title the series? Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, just out of curiosity, Snow Snake. Uh, you know, just what do you think? But um, as far as that goes, so everything over time, you're going to see the website take a uh, take a a bigger. Uh, uh, a bigger footprint. Um, I'm going to, you know, not only have all of my old videos on there, but as, uh, as I decide to, you know, kind of move everything away from potential censorship into a, um, into a more of a private area. So for the next year, this is what I'm going to really be working on. I want to be able to have 20 to 50 members. Uh, they're going to be free members or paid members. Okay. But I want to have about, uh, you know, 30 to 50 free members, uh, minimum uh, or members all together uh, that are over there and that, that get my my daily newsletter that I will be writing as far as you know with my content and stuff like that uh, it's a little bit more in depth and sometimes I'm better at writing it out um, than I am at speaking it so now I have two mediums I have the written form which will give you a little bit more information than the verbal form which will give you a little bit different type of information but I, I'm trying to kind of uniform and distinguish each part of it so that those that are looking for specific types of experiences or that digest information specific ways have a way to be able to do it in a way in which you know I'm able to gain such a large um, a large footprint. That's what I'm really working on. Okay, so we are coming up on about 45 minutes. So this is about my average of when I start looking at, uh, at going away uh, as far as uh, ending the live stream. So we're not ending it just yet. Uh, you guys do know how to help the channel become a subscriber. Uh, make sure that you share this content. It is important that every one of my videos that you guys are watching, if you could share it on your social media, it helps me get my reach and it helps me, you know, get exposure to new people uh, that might find value in the information. Okay. That's just something that uh, I, I could definitely uh, uh, use the assistance on. Uh, don't forget to like, and you know, you guys have been leaving lots of comments here. So that's a good question. Sometimes your thumbnails and title will be, uh, uh, what can get you, uh, more subscribers. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, is, you know, I, I tend to get better views when I don't use a thumbnail. Um, I've heard of, I've had people, multiple people that have told me that they've subscribed to me because they saw my beard and thought it was cool. You know, I, I don't get it, but whatever. Um, you know, I just got complimented on my way in here today by another guy who had a much 
better kept beard than I did, but he complimented me on my beard. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like a chin strap. So, um, no, it's not really random. Um, what they're using is the law of averages, uh, really is what they're, what they're using. And if your law of averages is even like a tenth of a point higher, you're going to get pushed out a lot more than, you know, somebody is a tenth of a point lower. Okay. And it's just, that's really the way it works. So, um, hey, what's up, Fitness Hutch? Nice to see you. Okay. Hey, if, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them now because um, otherwise you're going to have to go back to the beginning and, and watch it from the beginning uh, if you're a, a new uh, arrival. But uh, let's see what else is going on that I want to talk about. Um, no, it's just, yeah, I've been working on the website, been working on, on the series, been working on getting my footprint out. Um, been looking at making decisions as far as, you know, do I want to stay here? Do I want to go to West Virginia? Now I have to figure out how to split both of them. So the algorithm put you in front of me while watching Hobo Shoestring. Yes, um, I, I heard he got found in, in his own lake out uh, on the back of his property. That just sounds weird. He wandered off in the middle of the night and then, you know, and people are looking for him. Like, he did he get in an argument with somebody? Did, did, what happened? You know, um, uh, you know, I, I, you know, it's just, it, it is, I don't know. I, I just, it's kind of weird how he ended up the way he did. Uh, there, there, I have a lot of questions. Like how the hell does he end up at the bottom of his own lake? Okay. Was it because he, he had to do that willfully? There had to be a reason. What was the what was the conversation that got that made him get up and walk out of camp? That's the questions that I have that I would like to know. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I understand he's battling cancer, but um, you know, most people want to live as long as they possibly can. You know, maybe the depression got to him. I don't know. So, um, but you know, it just. It just seems really weird how how this all ended up because he had so many people that that cherished him and and you know looked up to him and all kinds of stuff, you know. And uh, so I mean I'm surprised that he that he went that way uh, if he took if he took it himself. I mean I'm just really really surprised. Um, I just wouldn't have expected that from him because he's I mean to ride the rails you got to be a tough individual to begin with. So maybe he went to go smoke a bowl at a coffee made fell in by mistake. <laughs> maybe. Um, I don't know if he, if he actually smoked. I know he drank. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know much about Hobo Shoestring other than just what I've seen on YouTube. Uh, you know, although he, he was a pretty cool guy, I was kind of hoping I'd run across him once. And a couple of his videos helped me find some jump spots. So, um, you know, it was, it was nice to to at least have somebody that, that had good information out there. And, you know, he was pretty cool. Um, that one got me scratching my head too, brother. Just don't understand how that man ended up in the lake. Yeah, it just, it makes no sense. Like, uh, and nobody's, they're, they're tight-lipped about it. So that means that they probably, uh, they, they probably believe that he, uh, that there was foul play involved um, in some sorts. So, um, Am I homeless? Yes, I, I sleep out on the I sleep out under a bridge and in parks every day. So um, or wherever else I can find a place to sleep. Okay, and so yeah, I, I sleep outside Fitness Hutch. Uh, and uh, you know, and and I was having a conversation last night with a subscriber, like because some of my subscribers, if you reach out to me, and if you if we communicate well, or you know, we're gonna work on something together, um, I generally give out my phone number, and you know, I, I leave the door open to be able to have conversations, uh, like verbal conversations with my uh, subscribers. It's one of the cool things. One of the things I like about. Uh, about being a YouTuber is the the uh, interactions that I get with some of you because I mean some of you guys are very very involved I call you my super fans you know and and uh, because of, of you guys I get to sit back and, and have conversations and and one of the things that 
uh, was was talked about was uh, last night in our conversation was kind of how the homeless world kind of crosses over into uh, into prepping one and we were talking about building a dream team and just how you know being homeless and having this experience of, of being able to survive in you know w with the deck stacked against you in a lot of places and you know you're never prepared for what's coming no matter how much you prepare and being able to you know jerry rig or or macgyver your own stuff and, and make things work when you know you you have when when you don't really have what you really need and you're working with inferior products uh inferior s stuff so it's it's not like you're you're working with high quality stuff and you're able to do all these cool things you're working with crap and you're turning that crap into something that's usable okay and so you know i guess that's the that's the big thing that the that the homeless population brings but we're also talking about how the homeless are misunderstood yes some are out here because they lost stuff uh some are out here because they um they have mental health issues some are out here because they have uh drug addictions um some are out here because they want to be some out, are out here and they're on the upper echelon some aren't okay um it's just like any other sub community within the american community you have you know you you have the the asian community that is they're also americans but they also have a sub community within within the national community called america okay you know like the asian community the hispanic community okay well you've got the homeless community and just like just like in any community you have your hierarchy you have you know you uh, so for example because i was thinking about this last night your your gangs are like corporations because they're they're out there solely for profit to gain profit and uh, expand their territory which is ex yeah. what mostly what gangs do okay then you have those those solopreneurs those guys that are going out there and scavenging that are uh, scrapping that are you know finding a trade and hustling that are going and freelancing and subcontracting themselves out I, you, you have your solopreneurs and then you have your workers you know those are the people that uh, go around and you know clean up other campsites or those are the people that go and work at the day labor and things like that so just in the same way that you have different um, different uh, personality types and uh, different uh, roles within the hierarchy uh, in in uh, the house community and so on and so forth you have the same thing within the unhoused or the homeless community and so that's something to to definitely consider when you're dealing with the uh, when you're dealing with with the homeless uh, crowd is that or the homeless community is that you know in the same way you have different walks of life in your in your community we have different walks of life in ours and me i i fit into the solopreneur um you know, i'm not i i would be considered lower middle class uh within the homeless community when i make you know more than maybe a, a grand or two a month i will be in the upper middle class you know uh that's kind of where a lot of the social security recipients are because they they have the money to be able to go they they don't have to pay rent they have the money to go out and buy whatever they want and you know they don't have to worry about uh, the the large overhead expenses you know and so you have more of a disposable income kind of like the upper middle class uh within within our the the house society okay and so when i get to that point i mean uh, i i'm i've always been in the upper or lower part of the middle uh, of the the homeless middle class okay and uh because you know I, i've i've always been a solopreneur in one form or fashion okay and so that that's why that's why you see me out here doing this is is i'm that in a lot of ways i'm kind of like that bridge and there are people that write articles about this but um it's a one and done and you don't really get any other information from them or these are people who have never really experienced homelessness that want to talk about homelessness as if they know it because they're looking at data instead of actually being able to call on real experience or those that have had a temporary experience but don't really know how rough the uh the the homeless lifestyle can actually be you know th those people end up going around talking about it. it's very rare that you have somebody that has been around the block as many times as i have and experience the the upside and the downside uh, in the way that i have that is taking the time to 
to do uh, multiple pieces of content to be able to, to put this out here. But in a way, I, I kind of look at myself as the liaison to kind of experience or help you guys experience that if you guys come into my community, this is how you're going to survive. In the same way that if you go to France and Germany, this is how you need to survive and this is how you need, you, these are customs that you need to be aware of. So, um, okay, you need to write a book, brother. I, you know what? Um, maybe, uh, tight lip means not talking much about something. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for subscribing fitness. Okay. Uh, I, I will try and write a book. Okay. Does it imply that the, uh, person has the same inside info that he doesn't want to share? Um, yes. If, if somebody is tight lipped or doesn't, you know, like I, like I experienced the other day, I didn't know, I was trying to figure out where they were feeding at. They, they didn't want to share it with me because they wanted to be able to keep it for themselves because there was very limited amount of plates that they were giving out and they didn't want to miss out by, you know, inviting and announcing to everyone because when, one thing is, is when you announce something within the homeless community, it's like they show up in droves and all of a sudden they burn it out and what was once nice is no longer nice. It's just like they, they show up like a, a locust and just suck the life right out of it. So yeah, you're going to have people that will find good things, but unless they know that you're a decent human being that's trying to do the right thing uh, or, or trying to do better in your life or at least you, that you're okay with being homeless and you're not you know, some tool, they will share information with you but it takes a while for you to actually gain their trust. And that's why I was talking about it. And you'll, you'll find this out um, in tomorrow's video because I, I talk a little bit more about that. So uh, as far as as keeping information, yes, it does happen a lot here. Uh, there are there are things that I will find that I will not tell people about, even on YouTube that I will not tell people about because if I tell them, then all of a sudden I worry that that too many people are going to show up, going to burn out my spot, and then I don't have that that avenue of safety and security anymore. And so, uh, in a lot of ways, within the homeless community. Uh, that is something that you need to be aware of. And instead of being jealous, you just need to understand that that, is, that they're doing it for a good reason and that must be an important thing to them. So, you know, be respectful. So I've never considered it homeless, just home free. Uh, it's a way to get ahead and stack it. Well, yeah, if that's what you want to do. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I have I, this next month coming up is going to be the first time when I can put anything to the side if I don't go and do the expense the the spending that i that i want to do which is i want to my the tripod i bought from walmart was crap and didn't even work um after the first day uh so the so i ended up having to throw it away because it broke like it sucks so i i'm looking for another tripod that i can use so that i can I, I can do interviews and things like that, uh, you know, uh, and just be able to, to get content. But I also want something that has a selfie stick. So I'm looking into that, but I'm also looking into a lav mic that's gonna be wireless that I can hook to my, my cell phone so that I can get better quality, um, better quality uh, uh, sound, one, and two, you know, with it being as windy as it is because, you know, I am in the rust belt you know, with it being as windy as it is, I need to make sure that I don't, uh, that, that I'm not getting uh, drowned out by the wind. So that's another expense that, I, that I'm looking at. But everything else I, I've got going, I've got two power banks, I've, I've got my, uh, my camera fully charged, I've got a way to be able to, uh, to, to you know, pull the files off and stuff like that and, and integrate it into, into my editor. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, do I, you know, how much more professional do I want to make this? And again, just like I was talking about in the video earlier today, you know, sometimes you want to go get all that stuff, but it's not really worth it if you can make it work with what you have on hand because uh, wait until you're, you're making enough to where it, it's, it's not going to be, you know, instead of being 50% of everything you have, it's going to be 20% of everything you have. Okay. So it's not going to take a big old chunk. That's when you start expanding on quality equipment. And so that's kind of the struggle that I'm having right now, because the way that things are going this next month is if I wanted to, I could probably put maybe a hundred bucks aside if I get lucky. Um, but that means that, that I'm living about as cheap as I could possibly live. Uh, that means uh, all I get is a cup of coffee, a rolly cigarette, 
and um, and uh, a little bit of weed every day, uh, but you know I still get all that, and and I, but I'm doing it so very cheaply because um, going down to Coffee Emporium, I can get a large cup of coffee for two fifty. I get a small cup of coffee at Starbucks for three bucks. You get a small cup of coffee at at any of these other coffee shops for three bucks, and I can get mine for two fifty. So. Um, does it also imply that the person has, okay, um, I've never considered it homeless, just, okay, uh, okay, uh, they're a group of van lifers that are trying to get a piece of property together so they can come and go as they want and be able to garden, uh, uh is that, is that happen to do with, uh, cheap RV living, because that sounds like something he would want to do, Taylor, thank you very much, much appreciated, uh, thank you, uh, thanks, Martin, um, move like a ghost, be like a gray man. Yeah, pretty much. Um, do you rent a room occasionally? Um, when, when winter comes this year, uh, that is what my goal is. If I'm going to stay here in, in Cincinnati, especially for the winter, uh, one of the things I need to make sure to do is to, uh, be able to rent a room in a place or rent somebody's garage out or something for like maybe if I'm renting a garage out, I, I won't pay more than $400. If I'm renting somebody's room out, um, I won't pay more than seven. And that includes all utilities. I shouldn't have to pay more than that. And, but, and I can find a place like that. It may not be the greatest place, but, uh, you know, being outside versus being inside and having the, the warmth and a place to be able to store your gear and all that other stuff will be nice, uh, you know, especially for the winter. That way, when it's super cold, I, I, I can go in, I can go out, and I can be inside and outside as much, or I can be inside as much as I want to, okay? Because right now, when it when it dry, when we had this cold front come through, oh my god, I wanted to be inside so bad. But you know, it's it's something that I, I've learned to be accustomed to. But this was just it was just super rough, um, and it was unexpected. So uh, homeless have absolutely destroyed every camping spot around me. Uh, yeah, uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about, bushcraft. So do you know anyone that is homeless by choice? Yeah, me. Um, so, and I even did a video on it, Homeless by Choice, uh, The Labyrinth of Help. Um, huh, The Labyrinth of Help. Okay, uh, I, will, I, will, um, uh, I will take that into consideration. Uh, is a group of young van lifers thought it was a cool idea? Yeah, I mean, if they can do something like that. Uh, I, there was some, uh, some guys I met uh, at the campground cause, uh, that I was... Uh, right, right after I came out of St. Mark's in, uh, on the Florida trail, they were doing the same thing. They were all going to go in on property and have it as a winter property. And they all just hook up their RVs. And instead of, instead of paying, you know, the, the monthly fee to stay at an RV park for like three months out of the year, they just pay a, a, a monthly payment and split it between them all. And in that way it saved them money and they could go to the same property whenever they wanted. So, um, yeah, uh, people, there are people that are doing that, and I think that's a really good idea. Okay. So anyways, guys, um, we, we're we getting over that period of time. It sounds like you guys have asked a lot of questions. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes to ask a last couple of questions. But again, if you have not shared this video, please uh, share it. Uh, make sure you uh, hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to uh, leave a comment if you haven't. And, uh, you know, come check out my website. Again, it is uh, hobo, H-O-B-O, tuck, T-U-C-K dot com. So hobo, tuck dot com. Uh, you can come over there. You can check it out. I've only got the skeleton up right now, but um, it, you I, you have the contact me is already set up. And my email is going to change to um, friartuck at uh, uh, hobotuck.com. Uh, and that's going to be my main email. That way I can, uh, I can keep it all there. So whenever I'm dealing with subscribers and stuff like that, um, now give me, give me a couple of weeks before you start sending me emails and things like that there. Uh, you know, keep sending it to Jason the wise, but there's going to come a point when I make an announcement and I will put it on, on the community tab, as well as in a video that, um, you will be, you know, that you need to start sending stuff to Friar Tuck at, uh, hobo tuck com okay and so again come on over there check it out subscribe become a become a member it, it's free um so i got some kid trying to come in so 
um, you know, things like that. Have you watched One, Two, Three, Home Free yet? Uh, no, but I have subscribed to it. Uh, I have not uh, had a chance to sit back. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. It just seems like I'm so busy that by the time nighttime comes, I'm just trying to curl up and, and stay warm uh, during this freezing cold. Uh, but normally, yeah, I would, uh, if, if it were warmer temperatures, I would be probably up till midnight watching all of this content that you guys suggest for me. So um, I, I will watch it. I am subscribed to it, uh, and I saved it as a place marker. Um, so uh, I live in an 8 by 10 shed turned into a bunker. Yes, I, I've heard you say that on your live streams. And hey, if you guys haven't checked out All America Prepper, you should go over there and check out his channel, Bushcraft's channel, uh, Joe Morgan's channel, Tomcat's channel, um, Hobo Stove. I mean, we got a lot of people there. And, and if, you, if, you want, um, if you want a direct link to it, if you go to my channel page, you are able to, uh, to see all the different, uh, uh, you know, the, the family of Tuck. So um, these are all the different content creators that watch this channel that if you're looking to cross pollinate uh, and, you know, help out some of the smaller channels, uh, oh. the, you know, that's that, that link, that, uh, that list right there on my channel page uh, it is definitely good for you. I still have paranoids on there. Um, there's a lot of people that are on there. Okay. So um, with that being said, uh, you know, uh, I I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end this. And I'm going to say thank you for watching. Don't forget to share. Uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday's live stream. Uh, I am going to try uh, to do it in the light, the Saturday live stream for sure in the library. But I'm going to have to figure out somewhere to do it Tuesday night. But by Tuesday night, it should be warm enough to where um, I may, unless it's raining, I'll probably do it under the bridge. Uh, or if it's raining, I'll do it under the bridge. Otherwise, um, we will we will go find a place to do it probably around six o'clock uh, in the in the evening. I'm gonna probably do it around six to six thirty uh, is when I will start doing the Tuesday live streams because I want to do them late enough for those of you that work the nine to five so that you have time enough to get home, eat your dinner, and then turn on the tuck tube. So. A lot of big channels watch your channel. Um, yes, actually they do. I'm surprised by it. I don't know why. I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> I really don't know why, but I'm, I'm grateful to those that watch my channel that, you know, I've seen there's some people with 30 and 40,000, 80,000 subscribers. I don't think I have anybody with more than 100,000 subscribers watching this channel though. But anyways, guys, and don't forget to hit that like button and I will see you in the next live stream on Tuesday evening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being family.